Let's talk about the Central African Republic. The fighting there is so bad that more than 200,000 people have fled their homes since December. Most of them across the river to the Democratic Republic of Congo. There's a tug of war between two men, the president who just got himself re-elected in a messy vote and a former president who's under UN sanctions and wants his old job back. An investigation was launched against him, but to this day his whereabouts remain unknown. So why did an election stir things up? Who's fighting who in the CAR? And why are the Russians in there? The Central African Republic is a former French colony that's basically the same size as France. But where France has almost 70 million people, the CAR has less than 5 million. And while it has a lot of natural resources, the average person lives on less than $2 a day. Things were bad under colonial rule, but independence in the CAR has also been a rough ride. The man meant to become the first president died in a dodgy plane crash. In the 70s, the CR had a brutal leader who declared himself president for life, then emperor, before the French got rid of him. There have been coups, two civil wars, and a handful of disappointing peace deals. It's a country where corruption has been the nature of governance, where the state has been absent from the day-to-day -day lives of ordinary people. So 60 years later, the CER is pretty much run by whoever has the most guns. There are maybe 20 militias who control two thirds of the country and do pretty much whatever they like. Some of them started out with some kind of cause, but many resorted to killing, extortion, and fighting over resources. Now the main rivalry is often laid out as being between the Selica, which is mostly made up of Muslim groups, and the anti balika who are mostly Christian fighters, but it's not as simple as Muslims versus Christians. There are all kinds of shifting alliances and other local disputes in the mix. Stabilizing the country is an enormous challenge, especially outside the capital, Bangui. There are vast areas of country where nobody is in control. Okay, to understand the fighting going on now, we have to get into the fight between these two, President Faustin Arcange Touadera and former President Francois Bozizé. At one point, they were in the same government. Tuadera was Bozizé's prime minister. So Bozizé took power in a coup in 2003, and he's been accused of having a hand in all sorts of atrocities, which he denies. Fast forward 10 years, and Bozizé is overthrown by Selica rebels, and he leaves the country. What followed were two years of conflict and chaos. The Selica struggled to keep control. <laughs> An alliance known as Anti Balika emerged to fight the Selica. It was made up of many Christian militias. At the beginning, the Anti Balika targeted only the military base of the Selica groups, but then this turned into targeted attacks against the Muslim population. Eventually, France's military stepped in and there was a peace deal between the government and some of the militias. They called elections, and Tuadera ended up winning. So in 2016, Tuadera is the president. Meanwhile, Boziz is in exile, and he's been accused of supporting anti balika rebels, which is why the UN imposed sanctions on him. Now, while Tuadera was in office, things did calm down a bit, but militias still controlled large parts of the country, and the peace deal ended up falling apart. So in 2019, the government signed a new deal with 14 armed groups. The plan was to integrate some militia leaders into the government and fighters into the army. Things were looking up, and the elections last year were supposed to mark a new start. And then Bozizé came back on the scene. He returned to the CAR and wanted to run for president, but the Constitutional Court banned him, saying he failed to meet the standards of good morality. Bozizé himself had never relinquished the desire to come back to power. It was no surprise um, that his return kicked off a new cycle of violence, kicked off a new start to, to political tensions. This time, some Selica and anti balga factions put their differences aside and formed a new alliance called the Coalition of Patriots for Change. Using guerrilla warfare tactics, the rebels have taken control of more than two-thirds of the country. Many say Bozizé is leading the rebels, though he denies that. 
Bassisi offered this coalition political leadership and money, immunity um, as well. These groups have effectively declared that they will not support Trudeau. Now, all of that happened before the elections in December. So when it came time to vote, many people, especially in rebel-controlled areas, either couldn't or were too scared to. But in the end, Tuadera was re-elected president. And even though opposition groups accused him of fraud, the Constitutional Court ruled that he won in the first round. You can imagine, though, how Tuadera's enemies reacted. The CPC, that coalition of militias, stepped up their war, and people have been trying to escape. They're running from murder, rape, and kidnapping. More than half of its five million people are in urgent need of humanitarian assistance. Things are now so much worse in a country where a quarter of the population was already displaced. Right now, the government is fighting a huge group of heavily armed and well-organized militias. So it's relying on outside help to turn things around. 300 French soldiers, 11,000 UN peacekeeping troops, the Rwandan army's in there, Russia too. They say to train the CAR army. The instruction is happening in Russian. No, еще раз говорю, как бы здесь будет именно Россия проводить политику именно мирных, мирный переход. So a whole lot of outsiders, each with their own interests. The people of the CAR though have other concerns. People want to be able to go back to their businesses, to the fields, not to be scared and not to have to uh, flee every month to the bush or to a neighboring country. People reckon the best way forward is to somehow revive that peace deal from 2019. To do that, the president, the former president, and all their allies need to come together. But that won't be easy in a country with a lot of players and too many guns. Al Jazeera is always monitoring what's happening in the CAR. So check our website for the latest and YouTube for reports from our correspondents on the ground. I'll see you next week.